What's going on, everybody? It is March 3rd, Saturday. We've got a six and a half game slate, depending on uh, which site you like to use. DraftKings does have the uh, the Magic Grizzlies game. FanDuel doesn't. So, um, yeah, they you know, last night sucked. Uh, just a kind of a crummy night in fantasy regardless. Um, let's pop open the rewind here. I know it was like a hundred percent Russ in the top hundred lineups, hundred uh, percent Aaron Gordon. I think. Um, what else we got? A lot of Nawaba. I'm really happy about Gobert. Obviously, Cat uh, got the gate last night, and then uh, Jeff T got the gate as well. So, top one hundred. Alfred Payton with the big game. That was the only guy that I didn't really have a ton of interest in. Um, I just didn't see a ton of upside, and I was uh, super duper wrong. So these are the uh, top lineups in order from last night. Could have been somewhere near this sort of stuff, but you know, I didn't. I couldn't imagine going for Ivan Rob with any sort of bulk. Or Ilyasova or Kaminsky. So basically, you know, very similar lineups at the top, rotating in sort of value power forwards. Um, even seeing Millsap there was kind of interesting. But you wanted to have a lot of Aaron Gordon, a lot of Russ, a lot of Alfred Payton. Um, let's see, who are the other centers? Yeah, DeAndre, you know, monster first half. Uh, but Russ and Peyton sort of ran the show. And then Aaron Gordon, biggest game he's had in a long time. When was the last time he went for 50? Last year. <laughs> so December 30th was the last time that Aaron Gordon had a 50-point game. He did OT, but still, uh, good to see him, you know, getting back to healthy. Uh, anxious to see what his contract situation looks like. But enough about last night. Let's dive into tonight. Uh, I'll take a look at the Magic Grizzly game for uh, DraftKings peeps. Um, Aaron Gordon would be first up. Did I refresh this? Probably not. Gordon is 7,200 on DK. That seems a little pricey on the back-to-back, -back, but they do get uh, the Grizzlies, who are... God, man, they have just... They, they are playing dudes that I just don't know. It, their roster is... It's tricky, man. How how you don't look into trading Marc Gasol is... It, it's almost... Like, you should almost lose the team for that. <laughs> they're so bad. They have so little in the way of assets. And I guess they're just hoping, you know, uh, Gasol and Conley could just be good next year. But what is the upside for the Memphis Grizzlies right now? It's bad. Um, so for Gordon... Uh, I'm going to say that he's a four. I don't like the back-to-back, -back, and uh, I don't entirely love the price either. Um, it's going to be a slower game. It's, you know, let's see where he ranks in the 5x5 five five rankings. Uh, power forward, where's Orlando? Oh, yeah, I fucking deleted them. <laughs> Okay, pull it up on here. I forgot I took them out for uh, myself. So, Gordon. Yeah, mid-tier. Um, Grizzlies have given up uh, a bunch of big games. They have given up a, a lot of, or they have been responsible for a bunch of duds. Three monster games. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think that uh, Aaron Gordon is anything that needs to be forced in tonight. Uh, Fournier, 5,900. I'm going to say that he's a four as well. Uh, the guy I'd be really interested in would be Vooch. Uh, I know it's a back-to-back, -back and he's still getting his, his legs under him, but put 44 up last night. Uh, this should be a pretty good spot. No Gasol, so he's going to have to just eat all over Deontay Davis or Bryce Johnson or whatever other uh, flotsam they're going to just trot out there. So uh, Vooch is a two for me. He's in a really good spot. Great price. Um, dude's good. He was rolling uh, 
earlier in the season. That seventy one price seventy one hundred price tag is um, still underpriced. Uh, Jonathan Simmons five thousand on DK. <sighs> Put up eight last night, which is just dog shit. But you know, had a forty pointer a couple nights ago. Ha- uh, has gotten into the thirties at times. You know, solid matchup for him. Uh, I'm safe with saying he's a three. And then let's say DJ Augustin is the last guy that I'd like to look at. Uh, I went for 36 and a half last night. He's at 4,600. Um, so I mean, any if you can get to 30 with him, you're you're super happy. He's done that twice in his last three. Uh, good price. I think he's just a three. That's a pretty good value play. Now for Memphis, look, admittedly, a lot of the guys that I have in here in their minutes are a bit of a crapshoot. Um, no idea if Harrison's going to play. No idea if Jamichael Green's going to play. They're short on bodies. Um, you don't want them to begin with, but there are some things that we could look at that are going to happen um, one way or the other. Uh, so I think the first guy to look at would be Ben McLemore. I assume that he's going to continue to get some minutes. Uh, he played 30 last night, um, put up 33 fantasy points. Just with the way that everybody is out, um, I'm expecting him to still see some minutes. He's still just a four for me because he's Ben McLemore, but I expect him to be able to be in play at 3,500. Um, Andrew Harrison scares me at 5,800, especially if he's dinged up. Um, Jermichael Green scares me at 6,500. I wouldn't touch him there. Deontay Davis uh, should see about as much run as he can handle. I've got him in for 22 minutes because he just sort of doesn't have much more than that in him. Um, but he's at 3,800, and he should be the starting center for the Grizzlies. Uh, so he's got to be a three. Other than that, I mean, I think it's all up in the air. Um, I don't like Dylan Brooks just in general. Um, but as we hear more news, if we hear that Jermichael Green is out again or Harrison's out again, Chandler Parsons is supposed to play tonight, whatever that means. Or, like, uh, it just just don't play the Grizzlies is basically the easiest way to say this. They're not good. Let's go to the real games. <laughs> Cleveland hosting the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Cavs five point favorites at home. They've got the number one implied total, uh, second in my little matchup rating, and you could probably make a case that it's first. Uh, Denver actually is the the team that shows up at the top, but I think Cleveland's defense is is has improved enough off of their old trash that they're probably not so so bad. Um, so yeah, I think that the Cavs are in an exceptional spot. Problem is. LeBron James, 12-2 on FanDuel, 11-5 on DK. Um, that is a, uh, a monster price right now for Braun. Let's see where he lands here. So they've given up nine, or they've had nine duds at power forward, which is kind of scary. But I think Braun is in line for a monster here. The problem is that 12-2 price tag is so difficult to overcome. Denver's defense has been really bad lately. Really, really bad. Let's see if I can take a look at that. At least it has been on a fantasy points per possession uh, measure. Let's take a look at the Nuggets. And we'll say their defense, let's just say since February 1st. So they're at 110, they're a 31st percentile defense. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do here. Um, we'll take a guess, 2-1-2018, does that work? Whatever I did didn't work. Doesn't matter. Um, 
They've given up three percentage points more fantasy points per possession than any other team, uh, or than average recently. Um, let's see who's number one in that. So that would be fifth worst overall uh, in the league right now in fantasy defense. So I think that I need, like, I think that I would be okay having a bunch of LeBron. It feels like a big game for him. Uh, I don't know. I could be crazy. The price is tough. Uh, George Hill, 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Followed up that 45-point game with 22 minutes and 17 fantasy points. So who the hell knows what George Hill is doing. Uh, it is a good spot, though. The price is fine. I've got him playing 28 minutes. If he does, he should be relatively close to value. Uh, I'm going to say George Hill is a 3. Uh, Rodney Hood, not as interesting as he was um, two nights ago when uh, JR was suspended for throwing soup at Damon Jones, which is just <laughs> great. It's such fucking JR. <laughs> uh, Hood is just a four for me. Even in the start and playing 39 minutes, he could still only get himself to 26. I just, he doesn't seem, I don't, I don't get the fit here. Uh, Corver is probably just a four. There's probably like, Everything is so spread out for the Cavs right now. So it, it makes a lot of these guys less viable in fantasy, more like GPP guys. Like Nance has put up, he's 5,900. That's so expensive, but he's been hyper efficient since he's come over. I just don't think there's a ton of upside in it. So he's a four as well. we'll go to Denver. Nuggets, um, 111.5 implied total. They're five-point underdogs. Uh, they have the third best implied total on the night. Uh, first up is Gary Harris, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. That's not bad. I mean, most of Denver should look good with, uh, with Cleveland on the other side. Gary Harris put up 38 uh, last night. So the back-to-back -back is a little concerning. Um, I'll say Gary Harris is a three. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Will Barton, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Uh, I just, again, I think he's too expensive. Um, so I'm going to say that Will Barton is a four. Uh, Jamal Murray, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. I've said it before, I'm not a huge fan of Murray now that Millsap is back. Um, but this is Cleveland, and point guards uh, eat it against Cleveland. So, did I close that? No. Where is he? I assume he's near the top. Yeah, Jamal. So, Jamal Murray is uh, the sixth best in the sixth best spot. Cavs have given up 11 big games to point guards, um, four monster games to point guards. I know it's a bit different of a team, but uh, I don't think anything has changed there. So I'm going to say that Murray is still a three. I can't go too crazy because I think he's a little expensive, but uh, it's a great, like, it's a really, really good spot. But Jokic, 10,000 on FanDuel, 9,600 on DK. Um, I assume he's in a good spot. Apparently not. Only three big games to centers. Three duds, which is good. But two of those three big games were monster games. Uh, I don't, I can't imagine why this one wouldn't follow the same suit. Uh, Jokic looks great to me. Um, where does he rank for the rest of the peeps? This is just the same uh, big games chart as uh, is right here. I just sort it differently so that I can see it a little bit better. Um, what is happening?
There we go. Okay, so Jokic is middle of the pack in terms of matchups for centers. Um, so yeah, I would be comfortable saying that I think Jokic is a two. He's in a, a great spot as a stud. Um, I would feel more com well. I would feel more comfortable with Vooch on DraftKings than Jokic, but I like Jokic. Uh, it, Jokic's salary on DK is a little. A little high, so I'm actually going to bump him down to a three for DraftKings. Yeah. Uh, Wilson Chandler, just too expensive. Uh, 5,600, you know, last night shows you what the downside of Wilson Chandler is. Seven fantasy points. Um, I don't have any interest in him at all. And then Paul Millsap is 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Uh, I think he's going to get a decent allotment of minutes uh, they're not bringing him back for any sort of like lower body stuff, so I wouldn't expect him to rest, or I wouldn't expect the back-to-back -to, -back to be a problem. He's just coming back from a wrist injury, so um, you know, as long as he feels like he's got the legs to play, I think that he's going to play. So Millsap's a four uh, for me on Fanduel. For some reason, I just really like him on DK. I know it's like a almost a similar price point, but. I think he makes things work a little bit easier. Go to Miami. Uh, the Heat, 105.25 implied total is seventh. Uh, as as ex well, not as expected, but we're not expecting Wayne Ellington or fuck who else is hurt. Tyler Johnson. So this should look uh, a little similar to two nights ago or last night. Nope, that's still Denver. Two nights ago. Um, so yeah, they're going to be short-handed. Uh, you have to assume that Kelly Olynyk won't eat as many uh, wangers as he did <laughs> two nights ago. But God, that was bad. Uh, great matchup for Miami. Um, they are they have the fifth best matchup for me. I'm probably going to have a good bit of them. Um, I loved them two nights ago. Had a ton of heat guys. Uh, the Lakers just shot the lights out. I think that's more uh, of a, a weird night, and I think that the Heat's D will be uh, on full display here. So Josh Richardson, uh, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. I'm not super crazy over him at that price, uh, but he's in a solid spot. They do generally move him to shooting guard um, with Wayne out. And if that's the case, he's got the worst shooting guard matchup of the night, oddly enough. Although, a lot of that probably has to do with Avery Bradley. Um, so it's hard to parse that out sometimes. I'm just going to say Josh Richardson's a three. Goran Dragic. Uh, man, I hate when I don't type this shit in the right spot. Uh, he's 6,900 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK, which is batshit crazy. Um, but he's in a, like, he has to play a ton because they don't have any other real point guards. Um, you know, mid-tier, uh, they've given up seven big games, only four duds, one monster. Uh, I had a bunch of him two nights ago. I'm going to have a bunch of him again. Like... Uh, Dragic a lot on FanDuel. He's a four on um, on DK. That price is preposterous. Whiteside, 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. What is his history against Drummond? Because I feel like one of the two of them really owns the other. And I also feel like they play constantly. Okay, so Whiteside didn't play the last time. Eight shit uh, the game before that went for 40, so it was just normal there. Terrible games prior to that. And then Drummond, he went for 66 in the game he didn't play. Didn't play in the middle one, but hammered on him three times last year. Okay. So I'm going to temper my expectations of Whiteside. Um, does great out as a decent matchup. Four big games, three monster games uh, against the Pistons at center. Um, I love the price of Whiteside, 7400 
but he's got to be just like a neutral three. I can't go too, too big on him. Justice Winslow at uh, 4,200, 4,400 on DraftKings, brother of uh, Eddie Winslow. I did say, I, I typed Winslow. Oh, God. Never changes. Uh, had a really big game, 31 points um, two nights ago. 39 uh, in this game before the game before that. <laughs> uh, 4200 is not a bad price. I'm not super worried about the Pistons. I'll say that he's a three. Uh, Wade, 4800 on FanDuel, 5500 on DK. Uh, DK price is, is preposterous, but I think Wade, Wade's a three on FanDuel. Um, again, he's going to have to shoot the ball. I have no issues with running him out there. Olenek. Uh, people hate him right now because of how bad he was. He played 13 minutes, put up 6.6 .6 fantasy points. That's atrocious. No reason to suspect that that would happen again. Um, I've got him in for 24 minutes, but I think there's upside in that. And at 4,100, um, he looks to be in a great spot. I'll go right back to the well. I don't have a problem with it. I'm going to say Kelly Olenek is a 2 um, and a 3 on DraftKings. Now, if we hear that his minutes are going to be a little different, uh, that could change. But if he plays the allotment of minutes that I would expect him to play, uh, he's a value at that at that price. James Johnson is going to be just a 4. Um, he hasn't been getting the minutes that I would want him to get with any consistency. And then uh, I don't want any part of Rodney Magruder. That would, I mean, he had some hot shooting, and he had those 12 points in like three minutes, and I was freaking out, thinking, why don't I have more Magruder? Rockets. 112.5 implied total is second. They are eight and a half point favorites at home against the Celtics. Interesting game. So James Harden is 11-2 on FanDuel, 10-7 on DK. I think he looks pretty good. Um, obviously, the Celtics are a good defensive team, but they have been trending down. Um, Harden has a below-average matchup, but uh, the, the Celtics' D has not been as locked down as it was, say, like four or five weeks ago. So Harden's just a three. Uh, Trevor Ariza is 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. Every once in a while, he has one of those games where he just goes crazy. I don't think this is the spot for him. Boston limits threes. Um, they give up a lot of free throws. Those are two things that Trevor Ariza doesn't generally participate in. Well, he shoots threes, so that negatively impacts him. Um, so I'm going to say Ariza's a four. Chris Paul, uh, 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. Got one of the worst matchups. Only two big games against as uh, point guards against the Celtics this year. Five duds. Um, I would like to like Chris Paul. I just don't. Uh, so it's going to be a four. Clint Capella, though, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. Um, you know, lower tier lineup, or lower tier uh, matchup for Capella. Six big games against the Celtics, but nine duds as centers. And that's just, uh, that's scary. I think that Capella is in uh, GPP only spot because of those duds. And, uh, since I'm playing mostly GPPs, I'll say that he's a three, but, you know, be wary of him. Uh, Celtics have had a no shortage of games where they shut down centers. Eric Gordon, uh, he got 28 minutes after, you know, missing a bundle of games. Um, he's at 4,600. It's not the best spot for him. I'm going to say that it's a four. I would have liked to like Houston more here, but I just don't. Celtics, uh, 104 implied total will be 10th on the slate. Um, Kyrie is 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Uh, he's been really hot lately. Uh, put up 48 in 25 minutes. Um, they're coming in on uh, a couple days rest, which is always good. 
Uh, I don't like that price on DraftKings. But what are you going to do? Um, Kyrie, in terms of matchup, is lower tier. Seven duds uh, against the Rockets this year. So, while it should be a good game, I'm not sure it's going to be a great fantasy game. Uh, Boston rarely gets to the line. Houston, uh, really good at keeping people off of the line. Um, so, that's a, generally a place where you can pick up some extra points, and um, I don't see it tonight. So... For that, uh, I'm going to say that Kyrie is just a four, and I probably would avoid him on DraftKings. Al Horford is 6,100 on both sites. Um, got up to 33 uh, three games ago, but otherwise just has not been very good. Uh, where are we hiding Boston Center? So six duds. Um, I, you know, there's very little upside to Horford at this point. He's just not playing well. Uh, it's going to be a four. Jalen Brown, 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. For some reason, I feel like Jalen Brown could have a game here. But biggest game in his past three weeks is 31. Um, you won't even be super happy about that. So that's a four. Jason Tatum has been slumping dramatically. Uh, he's 4,700 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. You know, I wouldn't touch him on DraftKings. His biggest game in the last three weeks was the 36-pointer uh, three games ago. Otherwise, he's been in the teens, which is uh, concerning. Uh, again, just a four. I don't... I don't see... I don't see anybody really worth it on DraftKings for Boston. Um, some of these guys on FanDuel look like they'd be okay in a GPP. But I don't have much trust uh, across the board. Marcus Morris is the only guy that I think is kind of interesting. Uh, 4700 on FanDuel. Um, he's been going in the mid-20s a lot, which feels like a little bit of a safer play than uh, like Brown and Tatum. So I'll say Marcus Morris is a three. And uh, we could see a little bit more Marcus Smart, depending on how matchups are shaking out. Um, I'm comfortable saying he's a four. All right, this one's going to be a weird one. San Antonio Spurs. Uh, we're not expecting to see LaMarcus Aldridge uh, a little dinged up. So... Lots of value on the Spurs. Not a place you ever want to say there's a lot of value because they're obviously terrifying. But first up is Patty Mills. Mills played 37 minutes the most recent game, has a couple games rest. Went 35 minutes before that, 33. So Pop seems to be ramping him up for some strange reason. But at 4,800, um, that's a great price, especially going up against the Lakers. Um, where does Mills grade out? So, San Antonio's got the third best matchup for point guards. Um, they've had five big games against the Lakers, very little duds. Uh, I think both Murray and Mills are going to be pretty safe here. Uh, so, I'm going to say that Patty Mills is... Oh, boy. I'm going to say that he's a... Th Man, he's so close. I'm going to say that he's a two. I think that that's a price point where uh, it'll open up things for you at other positions. Uh, DeJounte Murray is 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. You know, I love him. He's been playing big minutes. Came off a 40-point game. Uh, his most recent one went for 52 in the game before that. But his price has caught up to him. Um, how big of a jump have we had in his price? Yeah, so he was 6200 uh, two games ago. He's up $1,300 now. Uh, he's a three and nothing more. Um, make sure that when you look at his recent games and think, oh, he's been playing great, I'm going to load him up. you got to remember that that price jumped. Kyle Anderson, 5800 and 5300 um, I think that he's just a three. Same for Danny Green. Oh, 
Now, Pau Gasol, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Uh, didn't play in the most recent game, so he's had a ton of rest. Um, as long as he can get himself out on the floor, I think this is a good spot. You know, it's middle of the road, and the Lakers have given up some duds um, against centers, but I think they're going to need a lot of Gasol with Aldridge out. So, for me, Pow is a three on FanDuel and a two on DraftKings. $5,500 price tag is great. Um, and with DraftKings being able to have, you know, multiple centers, it certainly opens things up a little bit more. It's always good to get a, a good value play at a center position on DraftKings just because you can run out more than one guy. Now for the Lakers, 101.75 implied total is 12th. Uh, KCP, let's see, how far down do I want to go? I'll go to Kuzma. KCP, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Um, you know, Spurs defense is good. Uh, they've had 10 duds against shooting guards this year. I don't want any part of KCP with that sort of recipe. He'll be a four. Now Lonzo, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Uh, filled up the stat sheet, had 41 fantasy points in or uh, two nights ago. He's middle of the pack here. Five big games against the Spurs, five duds as well. So, you know, it's reason to be a little nervous, but I think Lonzo looks good. I'll give it a three. Uh, Brandon Ingram is a little dinged up. He's also at 7,200, and uh, he has the worst matchup at small forward. Uh, six duds, no monster games. Um, Brandon Ingram is a four, but I would probably fade him at all costs just because of his health. Uh, Julius Randle, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Uh, it's been playing great, you know, three straight 40-point games, 37, 39. They're all at value. I'd like to see what his price has done. Skirt. Where's it at? Oh, so it actually went down $200. They've been keeping him steady, but that's a lot of green. Dude's been super consistent. Looks like a really good, um, uh, or looks like a solid cash play. Uh, centers against the Spurs have been bad this year, but there's no Aldridge, so I think that opens stuff up a little bit. I wouldn't be super worried about the Spurs' defense, but let's take a look at that. I'd like to see the Spurs, when Aldridge isn't on the floor, what their defense grades out as. So as a team right now, they are 83rd percentile defense. 104.9 uh, points per 100 possessions. When Aldridge is off the floor, an 83rd percentile defense goes to 68. So not as dramatic of a drop as I would have expected. They do have a negative three-point point differential, so something to keep in mind for the Lakers there. Um, so I think Randall is just safely a three. Isaiah... Uh, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. What did they jump his salary to? Yeah, it was 5,400 two nights ago. Uh, the value has been zapped out of that number. Um, not totally, but most of the way. 39.8 uh, fantasy points in 30 minutes two nights ago. Um, he's still just a three for me. I don't want to go too crazy. Um I assume, where is he hiding? I feel like he'd be a really tough matchup. Murray is uh, incredibly active, and uh, Isaiah just doesn't have that burst right now. Then finally, Kuzma, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Uh, I've been getting a little bit extra run lately. Uh, I don't see anything other than just a three. Now, Blazers... Hosting the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, Blazers are four-point favorites at home. Um, fun game. I'd like to watch this one. Uh, so first up is Dame. He's got the fourth-best matchup at point guard tonight. Uh, 
while there have been eight duds against the um, the Thunder, seven big games, three monster games, um, Oklahoma City on the back-to-back, I think uh, Damian Lillard is in an incredible spot here. Um, I'm going to say that Lillard is a two. He's 9,700. Uh, put up 50 in his last game. You know, it's had 58, 61, 67. Uh, he's been really hot lately, and I don't think that that changes here tonight. Uh, so I really want to take a, a nice long look at Dame. I'm also pretty interested in CJ. I know that he hasn't been playing very well. He's at 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Um, but second best matchup, eight big games as shooting guards. Uh, five duds, which is a little high, but tolerable. Four monster games. Um, uh, CJ, CJ, CJ. He hasn't been going crazy, so I, I want to taper or like temper my expectations for him. Um, but he feels pretty safe. I'd be okay with CJ in cash. Aminu is crested back over the 5,000 mark, which is usually something I'm not fond of. Uh, but they do give up a ton of corner threes. So uh, Aminu is going to be a three for me. Mo Harkless is a four. And then finally, uh, Nurkic, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Um, second worst matchup, 11 duds against the Thunder coming out of the Mariko Harkless. So many duds. Um, Nurkic is a four. I would avoid him like the plague. Steven Adams is that dude. Get some coffee. Uh, for the Thunder, 104.75 implied total is ninth. Um, Paul George, first up. 8,700 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. Um, avoid him at all costs on DK. 8,700 is too much. But three straight games in the 40s. Uh, fourth best matchup. Three monster games, eight big games. Um, he's in a really good spot as a small forward. Um, I'm going to say he's a three. Uh, I like him in cash a lot. I'm not sure the upside is there. We've got Russell Westbrook, 11-2 on FanDuel, 11-2 on DraftKings. Near the bottom, actually, um, Portland. Six big games against the Blazers, but eight duds, which is, uh, that's good for a team that you wouldn't expect to be locking down any sort of point guard defense. Uh, Russ went for 73 last night. Um, in 40 minutes, so playing monster minutes last night, back to back, traveling to Portland. Uh, Russ is just a three. It's going to be hard to pay up right there. I think like Braun is in a much better spot. Stephen Adams uh, is 7100 on Fanduel, 6800 on DK. Adams is middle of the pack matchup. Five big games, four uh, duds, but three of the five big games have been monsters. I'd like to look into that a little bit, I guess, just to see if that had anything to do with scoring. You know, obviously, you know, there's a much different, like, Jokic and Adams play very different, and if uh, Portland's been getting slaughtered by offensive centers, it's a little bit more uh, tempering for Steven. So let's say Adams is a... Man, 7,100. I, I don't love it. He's a four. And then finally, we've got Mello being typed in the wrong cell. Mello is 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. It's just been so bad lately. At some point in time, you would think he's going to break out. Um, third best matchup. Five big games, four duds, two monsters. Nothing insane there. I'm going to say that he's just a four. Last game on the slate, the Sacramento Kings hosting the Utah Jazz. Uh, Jazz six-and-a-half-point favorites in Sacramento. 
Um, no Willie Colley Stein for the King, so uh, there's some value town here. Oh, val did I say value town? I sound like fucking Guy Fieri. Give, give you guys some of the donkey sauce. Zach Randolph, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Um, by all accounts, he's going to need to play a pretty sizable chunk of minutes. Didn't play two nights ago, so he's coming in uh, well-rested. And uh, while the matchup is pretty difficult, yeah, depending on how you want to classify him, <clears throat> um, Utah, oddly enough, has been uh, not the best against centers. So if we're classifying Zebo as a center, eight big games, only four duds, four monsters. So there's some balance there that I find pretty interesting. You wouldn't expect that. So either way, at that price, with the role that he's going to have to play, uh, to me, Zebo is a two. De'Aaron Fox is six thousand on FanDuel, fifty-seven hundred on DK. Um, not a huge fan of this spot. Uh, middle tier, um, five duds though. I wouldn't really uh, entertain De'Aaron Fox. He's going to be a four. Bogdan is 5,700 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Uh, had a big game, went for 38 here. Uh, a couple games ago, also put up a 38. Hmm. Terrible matchup, seven duds. Uh, I think he's too expensive to begin with, so I'm going to say Bogdan's a four. It's probably a little easier to just pay down to healed. And by pay down, I mean pay up. 5,800. Whew. Pay down for healed on DraftKings, I guess. Healed at 5,800, also um, a four for me. Now, Scal. Scal is 5,200 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. He should get, you know, 27, 28 minutes. I've got him in for 28, but the ability to get some run is there. Uh, Utah, very good against power forwards, though, so it is a little concerning. Um, he's just a three, but he's in a position with a lot of opportunity. Justin Jackson's a four. The less said about him, the better. And then Kufos, uh, 4,400 on FanDuel, 3,700 on DK. Um, he went for 28 and 21 minutes two nights ago. Hard not to like him. Um, he's going to get some, some burn just because of... Uh, Willie Colley Stein being out, so he's going to be a three. Finally, we got the Jazz. Jazz on the back to back, but they are uh, swimming in an incredible matchup. Um, Kings with the worst fantasy points per possession rating uh, out of every team that plays tonight. So I'm hoping that the back to back isn't as applicable to them. Um, you know, the travel from Utah to Sacramento, relatively easy. Uh, they don't lose any time. So I think that Utah is in a, a great spot to load up on. Particularly, well, let's take a look. How much better is the Kings, how much better or worse is the Kings defense without Willie Colley Stein? So Stein... Let's see, we've got 17th percentile defense, 112.2. When Willie is not on the floor, I would imagine it's got to be worse. Yeah, it's basically the same. They're just, they're just shitty regardless. Good to know. Donovan Mitchell is first up. Uh, Mitchell, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. If we're classifying him as a shooting guard, it's a mid-tier option. Uh, if we're classifying him as a point guard, it's a relatively high option. Um, having given up any duds, he feels incredibly safe. I'd have no problem loading up on Mitchell in a cash scenario. I'm going to say that he's a three. Joe Ingles, 
Price is starting to come back down. Uh, 6,200 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Uh, mid-tier matchup. Nothing, nothing big, but um, nothing, nothing bad either. Uh, just a four. Rudy Gobert, eighty-five hundred on Fanduel, seventy-four hundred on DK. Went for sixty last night. Love this dude. Second best matchup. Uh, three monster games against the Kings at this point. Six big games. Um, now, I know I like uh, Zebo a lot as well. That's more of a value play. But I don't have an issue with paying up for Gobert either. I think Gobert is the best center on the board. I'm going to call him a two. Um, he should be in line to smash again. Uh, I would still prefer Vooch over uh, Gobert on DraftKings. But I would say that I like Gobert more than Jokic tonight um, just because of the price. Ricky Rubio, uh, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Uh, he's quieted back down after that hot streak before the break. Um, he's just a four. And then finally, last guy, Derek Favors, um, 5,700 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Uh, middle tier option. Uh, I don't see anything crazy. Um, he's a three just because of who they play. So that's where I'm at right now. Let's go ahead and dump these in, and uh, we'll crank out some. We'll crank out a couple lines to take a look. Actually, yeah, that's fine. <sighs> uh, no live stream tonight. It's Saturday. Go enjoy your weekend, everybody. All right, so 100 lines. Let's see what we get. A lot of Nurkic, which is, um, well, you know, not what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't use... None of the guys that I like are popping up here, which... Not the not a great start to the optimization process. So what I would do, ugh. man, I'm gonna lock Gobert. Let's see where that goes. So we're gonna want some Olinic Zebo. Lillard, Drogic, Mills. So we'll get there somehow. Lillard down here. All right, so we'll look at Mills first. We'll see if we can grab Olinick and Zebo, And then this group of nine should be fine. We've got one Drogic lineup. So that would be... Man, that's not bad. I don't like the Trevor Ariza portion. I would probably try to get out of that. And do something more like, let's do 20 on there. If I were trying to play one lineup. Um, you know, I guess I'd be fine with Wade. I think that would be unique enough. You know, I, I could see this being a big game for Jason Tatum. You get your brawn. Exposure, Donovan Mitchell in a great spot. I would like that. We'll take a look at DraftKings now. <sighs> Weather's cold here today. I just went to check my watch, but don't have it on. It's charging. Um, I wanted to see what the weather was like right now. It was chilly when I opened the door before, but last weekend was amazing. So let's bump that up to 10. And we will change that to 2 unique. Let her rip. Yeah, this is where we're going to see uh, some additional Grizzlies. So Lillard, Gobert, Vooch, Zebo, Gasol, and Mills. 
Okay. So there's Vooch. There's Mills. There's Pow. So what do we get to there? I don't like that. Let's back back down off of Pow. Grab Zebo. What do we think of those? Paul Harden Macklemore date. Yeah, I don't like that either. It's almost like I need to not have Patty Mills. Then I go to Pow. There's so much Trevor Ariza. I'm gonna have to knock him back a bit. Man, with all that value out there, it's still looking tricky. All right, guys, that's all I got. Uh, you guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, Twitter, Reddit, wherever you want to find me, I'll be there. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions, and uh, have a good weekend. Bye, everybody.